All right, we're going to get started with a question from Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports. Hey, Coach. Uh, that felt like the best game you guys have had in the preseason so far when it comes to offensive flow and uh, playing in point five. What did you make of the offense tonight and just the performance overall? I, th I thought we were really um, good in the first half. Uh, the second half, we missed a lot of shots. I thought not having, um, you know, a head out there for the most part, especially when they started blitzing book, uh, they kind of, you know, took us away from the basket a little bit. Them making threes in the third quarter, you know, stopped our offense. In the first half, we were getting stops and we're out and running, playing in point five and playing fast. I thought their ability to make threes, even ones off the dribble, slowed us down a little bit. But overall, I agree with you. I think the offense is starting to find a pace and a rhythm. And, um, you know, the more we can get some of our guys back who know how to play the way we play, um, it's going to get even better, I believe. We had Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Gerald Bourget. Yeah, Coach, I just found it interesting. Obviously, you know, game comes down to the end, but there were obviously moments you guys played well. What's what's just your, your big take from it all? And then, you know, trying to move, move the needle forward to this stretch of time you guys have that to prepare for the opener? Well, I, I think we, we got better as the games progressed, and, and that's what you want to see from your team. Um, even <clears throat> the offensive output in the first half, uh, being able to do that without Chris was uh, exciting. And then getting Cam Payne and Cam Johnson back, even in limited minutes, um, you could just see how they can affect our team uh, defensively, we, we're still giving up um, way too many three-point shots and three-point makes. You know, they had 30, which isn't a high number, but the 30 that they got, there were times where we didn't get a hand up or get a stick hand up before they even shot the ball. So that, that's something we got to focus on uh, for sure. But overall, with this many new guys on our team, I, I can see us getting better and better and getting more confidence. And just the, uh, the scratch on Chris, was that just, hey, Chris, how you feeling? He says, hey, it'd be best for me to sit. I guess, how was that decision uh, uh, made uh, in terms of, you know, whether to play him or not? No, we just try to be smart with him. Um, in a preseason game, we, we didn't want to take any chances. If there's some soreness, and, and especially with a few days off, we want to try to take advantage of those days so we can get ready for opening night. Next up, we have David Brandt with the Associated Press. He'll be followed by Gerald Bourget. Hey, Monty, I, I was just I, – Bridges obviously came back, so it must not have been that serious. But do you expect any lingering effects from that kind of nasty fall he took? And, and what exactly happened? Well, he got fouled. That, that's what happened. And it's, you know, something that should have been called. Uh, anytime you fall on your butt bone like that, it's going to be sore the next day. So, um We'll just have to see, you know, how he feels tomorrow. Next up, we have Gerald Bourget with Fan Sided, followed by Dave King. Coach, Langston Galloway is a guy that uh, can really light up in a hurry from three, and he doesn't need a lot of time to get that shot off. What, are, what have your impressions of him been, and, and how nice is it as a coach to have this offensive system that now has so many different shooters out there? Well, he, he gets – his shot off fast, but he also moves without the ball. And that's something that uh, we value in our offense. Um, his ability to, to knock down shots spaces the floor for our penetrators to get to the basket. So he does a number of things that, that help your offense and he just knows how to play. Next, we have Dave King with Bright Side of the Sun followed by Dwayne Rankin. Coach, a couple of things we've noticed in preseason is when, uh, when Dario's out, you're a little light on big men um, down, down low there to defend the, that's good, those guys. And also, um, you've lost a little free throw shooting with Kelly being gone. Where do you think you're going to make up in those areas as the season progresses? Well, we'll find out. Um, obviously, not having Chris out there consistently, uh, I think that's going to give us some free throw shooting and attempts for sure. Chris is a guy that can draw fouls. And, you know, when we get Dario back, I think the rebounding will improve. 
I think the offensive flow in the second unit will improve. Um, but I think you're spot on. But I do believe that, you know, Chris is going to allow for us to get more uh, free throw attempts. And even Dario. Dario's a guy, a guy, he's a guy that can draw fouls um, around the basket. And even when he puts the ball down, he's got a big body and he knows how to keep guys on his hips. And sometimes that allows for him to, you know, pick up fouls. All right, Coach, final two questions will come from Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Kellen Olson. Coach, I didn't know if it was a rotation thing or not, but Etuan didn't play. So was that just you trying to see what other guys were bringing? Just just, just curious on that, because he had played in the previous uh, three games, I believe. Yeah, it was just a decision that we made. Um, it's just really hard to, to get a good look at um, so many guys in the preseason. And when it got late, I wasn't going to do that to Etuan. He's, he's been in the league too long for me to play him uh, late in the game. So I decided to go with Tyshawn. Um, you know, JC played too many minutes, but I just like what he brought to, the, to both units tonight. And so that's the only reason I didn't, didn't play Etuan. I, I wanted to give Langston a longer look. Okay. Just to follow that up, I know, you know, Tyshawn has, has got obviously a ways to go, but uh, what would you think of him in that fourth quarter? Obviously, he pulled a shot and hit it. And, and uh, you know, how big, how big is a moment like that for him, even though it is preseason for him being a rookie? It's like the finals for a guy like Tyson. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the way it is. I mean, yeah. when you get a chance to play in an NBA game like that in his position, um, you have to approach it that way. And so for him to be able to, you know, come in and knock down the shot, um, play within flow and, and not get too – uh, out of character um, says a lot about him. Final question comes from Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports. Hey, Monty, six assists today for Javon. It feels like he's really improved playing point five. We saw that a lot in Orlando, too. Yeah. Uh, just what have you seen from him in terms of that off ball role where he's got to make quick decisions? Well, that's, you know, I played him too much, but JC's a guy that's in great condition and he's able to do it, but. You're right. Like he's he's learning uh, to make the right pass quickly. Uh, a lot of times he gets in trouble on the pocket pass, and you know he's not a tall guy, so it's hard for him to see over some of the bigger uh, pick and roll defenders. But for him to have you know those kinds of assist numbers is, is huge for us, especially on a night when you're missing Chris. You know you're going to need somebody to pick up the pace in the assist category. All right, Langston, we're going to get started with a question from Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Kellen Olson. Yeah, Langston, just just your summarization of the four preseason games. What do you feel like the guys have you guys have gained, learned, and in, in terms of uh, you know those games and moving forward to the opener? Yeah, no, I think uh, <clears throat> as of uh, these four games, we've been great for us because uh, we're we're a new group kind of forming, coming together, and uh, we haven't had any time to play pickup or anything like that in the summertime, which you normally have. So this has been great, getting an opportunity to play uh, and really gel together. And I think that, uh, you know, we might not have won any of the games, but I think that we're really taking the, the, the right steps in the right direction right now. So I think that, uh, you know, first game, we have a couple of days to kind of recuperate, get everything um, really fine-tuned, and then build from there. Uh, I'm curious on when you guys aren't out there with Chris, because that obviously was the case uh, tonight. What are what, what what do other guys have to do to make up for when he's not on the floor? I think the biggest thing uh, when, when CP is not on the floor is just just trying to beat themselves. Um, you don't need to try to overcompensate and try to make up for the points that we lose right there. But I think that we all have to come together as a, a collective uh, group and really just pick up the, the slack. I mean, CP brings a lot of uh, energy, a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, just betterness that, that we really need. So um, everybody else just picks their game up, picks their, their mental fortitude up, and, and we just try to continue to keep going. Next is Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Langston, this is the team that led the league in assists last year and in, in playing point five. And it felt like you guys finally hit that gear you were looking for specifically in the first half. What did it feel like for you as a shooter to be in an offense like that where everyone's moving, the ball's moving so crisp like that? No, it's great. It's great because uh, especially in our second unit, I think that we're just trying to find, find an open man. Um, nobody's trying to like, hey, look, we have to uh, make a shot or, or anything like that. It's just like, hey, look, whoever has the best available, available shot, we just shoot them. And uh, I think that that's, that's a great mindset to have as, as a player in this offense and then uh, 
Coach Monty is, is always trying to tell us, hey, be aggressive, kind of, kind of get out there offensively and defensively, trying to find ways to just disrupt and also uh, just try to change the game when we come in the game. Next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to follow up, uh, Lex, and um, when you see, uh, you've obviously competed against Devin Booker, but when you, a teammate now and seeing what he does, what what jumps out to you when when when, when being on the court with him? The biggest thing that jumps out to me is uh, is how he's he's really deceptive with with a lot of his change change of pace, and uh, he when he gets to his spots, he he gets up and, and he knocks those knocks those down. So uh, you know, as another person that comes up the bench and um, most of the time I'm either coming in for him or uh, coming in for somebody else, just trying to find ways to kind of uh, just find where I can pick my spots, but also too, you, you know, as a player, you're always learning. And uh, I mean, even though I'm older than him, I'm always learning from anybody that I play with. So it's, it's really good for me to kind of see that and, and uh, see how hard he works as well. And, and lastly, you know, you talk about picking your spots. I was curious how, how, how you're able to and how are you finding your way in terms of the offensive flow? Is it, is it, is it becoming more natural? Or are you still having to force it a little bit? I'm just curious um, how you're trying to find a rhythm when it's uh, when it's 0.5 and it's auto and it's moving and cutting and passing. No, no, it's, it's, it's never uh, like a four shot or anything like that that <clears throat> kind of has to come my way. Uh, most of the time, I'm just trying to attack, find open man, and then kind of re-space and then look for my shot. So. Uh, I'm always uh, just trying to get in, in um, kind of the spots that uh, kind of are open on the floor most of the times. And then also too, just, just learn them. Like I said, I'm, this is our first time getting a chance to play uh, as, as a unit and uh, just finding out, hey, look, how, what's guys, strong spots, strong uh, ways to pass the ball. And also myself trying to find ways to uh, play off of me and then be able to find open man. All right, Langston, final question comes from Gina Mizell with sons.com. Hey, Langston, uh, Monty just mentioned that uh, he wanted to get a longer look at you tonight. And so is that something that you get a heads up on before the end, before the game starts? Do you feel any pressure when you know you're in that type of situation where coach is like, okay, I want to get an extended look at, at you to, to see how you fit in or just how do you approach that mentally? No, I, I don't ask any questions. I just try to um, lock into my routine um, I never try to ask coaches, hey, look, what, what, what's going on tonight? What's not going on tonight? I just try to go out there and compete my butt off and then um, let, let everything else that I can control, let it happen and, uh, and then see what else uh, kind of unfolds after that. And I think that, uh, you know, just making the most of my opportunity as well. That's, that's my whole mindset. That's how I've always uh, been approaching every single game, every single opportunity being practiced, just uh, another opportunity. And, and that's what I try to make the most of. And then just last one for me, uh, you mentioned a couple times just that this is a new group and that, you know, this team was assembled quickly. You didn't have the time for pickup. Just how have you guys gone about trying to, to mesh sort of with this, you know, shorter training camp, the season right around the corner? Just how have you guys gone about doing that? I think um, our, our biggest thing is just trying to uh, have our control scrimmages and practice. Uh, that's, that's one big area that we've kind of seen has helped us. Uh, and then also we've, we've learned a lot over these last uh, four preseason games that, uh, hey, this guy's good at this. He's not good at that. So it's like a lot of uh, picking and choosing. And then guys have been uh, injured and in, in, in and out the lineup. So um, it's, it's a lot to learn from um, on a short notice, like you said. But I think we're, we're, we're going to be ready for the season. And uh, we got a couple of days to prepare uh, and just continue to uh, keep, keep nailing it nailing away. All right, Mikel, we're going to get started with Dwayne Rankin from the Arizona Republic, followed by Kellen Olson. Yeah, I hate to even ask you this question, but uh, it's like you hit your backside pretty hard. How's it feel? I'm all right. Um, just going to rest up. Um, a little uncomfortable, but, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to be ready. Just come in and get treatment and be all right. I was, I was surprised you came back in. What, 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 what happened in the locker room? What? When you get stretched out, I mean, what, what, what made you want to come back? I mean, how did it feel once you got back out there? Um, I mean, if you know me, I kind of, even if I'm hurt a little bit, I always want to play. Um, probably the best thing was probably for me to sit out, but, you know, I'm just, this is who I am. I just always want to go back out there. Um, this is back of my mind when I fell, I thought it was Coach Wright getting on me for getting back on defense. So I tried, but uh, I just couldn't get there. 
All right, Miguel. Thanks. Next up is Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports. Mikel, when we were talking about Chris uh, about two weeks ago with you, you mentioned like being on the court with LeBron sometimes and being like, wow, that's LeBron. It didn't look like you were doing that tonight. You were going at him a bit. Just your thoughts on that matchup and how it went for you tonight. Um, I mean, just being aggressive, uh, trying to find ways to score, um, no matter who's guarding. Um, you know, obviously, unbelievable player, one of the greatest players ever. Um, you know, just on both ends and – the, the toll on my body, guarding them. And it's only preseason. So, like, it's just unbelievable how unbelievable he is. And it was tough. But and I was just try to be aggressive on both ends. And um, no matter who's out there, you know. Next up, we have uh, Gina Mizell with Suns.com, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Mikhail, uh, you mentioned just that even in the preseason, you're just wired to want to come back in the game, even in that situation. Just where does that mentality come from? Or just how did you establish that just mindset that even if I'm a little banged up, I'm going to go out there, even if it's a preseason game? Um, things came from Villanova. Um, just how we how we approach everything. You know, um, if you ain't seriously hurt, you know, you gonna go out there and play, so I felt that's tough. I felt like um, that's how it was, so I just went back out there and uh, continue to play. I mean, you've never missed an NBA game in your career, and so I, I just even going back to I'm sorry for not knowing your entire injury history, but like college, high school, like what is the most time that you've ever had to miss just during a basketball season? Um, never in season. Uh, what I Going into my junior year, I'm like, I did something to my heel. So I was in a boot for like six weeks, but I was preseason. But I feel like I missed a game of college. I missed a game of high school. I was sick, but it was kind of like, it was in the playoffs, but it was the, um, we already lost. So it was kind of like the loser bracket for whatever you're going to place for states. And I think we probably wanted to lose that game and have a better um, <laughs> a better road on the uh, state side. So uh, coach kind of told me to relax and stay home. So um, other than that, I mean, I try to play every game, try to be healthy uh, and just go out there and play. One game in high school is unacceptable. I'm just telling you that right now. No, I'm just, I'm just giving you, <laughs> giving you the business. <laughs> Thanks, Mikhail. Thank Mikhail, final question comes from Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Yeah, what, what was working for you guys in that first quarter, you think? Um, it was just being aggressive. Uh, set, set the tone. Um, we know we just played them a couple of days ago, and we knew how great, how really good they are. So we had to know we had to go out there, set the tone, and from Jump Street, and that's what we did. And we just, you know, kept the pace. We got stops. That's the biggest thing. We got a lot of stops. And once we were in transition, we were a tough team to stop. So, um it's going to stop some playing. All right, Book, we're going to get started with a question from Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Kellen Olson. Yeah, Devin, how would you uh, assess the, the four preseason games and moving forward and getting ready for the opener? Um, I mean, we had some good spots and, you know, some spots to learn from. Um, I don't think we played one game full roster, um, but that's no excuse. Just trying to find the chemistry out there and, you know, I think we got better as we went on. The communication picked up, the aggressiveness picked up, and, and I think everybody was coming into their own. So, you know, we knew we knew it would take some time, but, you know, shorting that time um, and finding the chemistry um, is important for us. And just to, 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 to follow that up, uh, what, what was working for you guys, you feel like, in the, fir in, in, in the first quarter? Uh, we were just the aggressors. Um, instead of coming out, you know, getting hit in the face and then, you know, trying to recover from that. You know, we were the first ones to come out and, and throw the first punch. Um, just not being shy, not being timid, just going right at them. Um, and that, that's a real talented team over that. We understand that, you know, but it was our last preseason game. So we definitely wanted to push the pace and get our wind under us. Next is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports. Hey, Book, love the hoodie. Um, Appreciate that. Chris... Chris didn't play tonight, but in the Utah game, Monty kind of staggered you guys a little bit, and you ran point at the end of the third, and then tonight you played a lot of it. 
how do you feel like that look can change things for you guys when you have uh, kind of you guys switching off a little bit in the offense and taking time from resting? Uh, I think it's good for us. Uh, I think there's a good balance in between of playing off the ball when, when Chris is in the game and, you know, being a facilitator. Um, but at the same time, trying to find my aggressive spots at the point. Um, but, you know, just trying to, you know, keep what Chris has going, keeping people involved. Um, I've played, you know, spot point guard, you know, a few times amongst my career. Um, and, you know, I enjoy it. Um, it's just being there the whole time, a whole game like I've done in the past, you know, teams to an easier um, lock in than when you have another facilitator out there. But, you know, in spots, I think it's possible. Next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Just to piggyback off of Kellen's question, I, I had talked to Calipari uh, uh, about you at UK, and he was like, hey, we always worked on uh, pick and roll and guys handling the ball. He said, you just didn't see it in the game because Devin had to play a fucking role. So right. when did, you know, you start believing at, in, at this level, like, hey, you know, I can be that person that can, you know, set up guys and, and be the facilitator. When did, when was that something you felt as a rookie just didn't get the chance to do it? Or when did you start feeling that in the NBA? Um, I said I was thrown into the fire, you know, early in my career, um, playing with Eric Bledsoe, Brandon Knight, um, towards the end of those seasons when they deal with injury, um, I was just thrown in the fire with Ronnie Price out there. And, you know, Earl Watson gave me a chance and put me at point. Um, and I got to learn and play through mistakes, but, you know, I've always took credit, you know, on being a basketball player, you know, not a shooter. I was labeled as a shooter in Kentucky. Um, just being able to play all positions, you know, so even when coach puts in a new play, I'm not just paying attention at my position. I'm trying to learn it in every spot and just, be a basketball player. So <clears throat> whatever the team needs, you know, I think the game has turned to a real versatile game. You see a lot of people switching, switching a lot of, a lot of actions, guarding multiple positions and, and playing multiple positions. So, you know, you just have to know how to play. And, you know, that's what I took pride in, you know, most of my career and my training. And, and just to follow, follow that up. Um, Monty was saying that, you know, the other guys or the new guys are learning the offense in part because you're telling them, hey, you know, you know, got to be here, you got to be there, and, and that you have more familiarity uh, with the offense. How much pride do you take in that, that, hey, you know, not only am I doing all this other stuff, but I'm able to now tell guys, A, B, C, this is where you need to be? Yeah, it's, it's just part of teaching um, and experience. I would say it's not necessarily telling them they need to be in this spot, it's just you know, reading the game. You know, you don't know how teams are going to defend you. It's a read and react game. So you don't know what you're going to get every time down court. But, you know, you have to be able to notice what type of defense somebody's playing and react to it and make an adjustment. So, you know, our offense isn't no set plays. Coach Monty gives us tons of freedom. Um, as long as, you know, we're, we're moving the ball, sharing the ball and, you know, making each other better out there, making the game easier for, for one another. Next is Gina Mizell with Suns.com. Hey, Book, we were obviously just talking with Mikhail, and he takes that nasty fall in, in the first quarter and still comes back and plays, and it's just a preseason game. And, and he says, you know, no matter what, even if he's a little banged up, even if it's a preseason game, he wants to be out there. So just as a teammate, he's never missed an NBA game in his career. Um, just what does that do for a whole team when you know that there's a guy out there that is – super reliable and is going to still come back in the game even when, he, when he's a little yeah. banged up like that did I hear him say that, that was Villanova that taught him that earlier yeah <laughs> oh man um well I'm not gonna credit Villanova to that I just say that's what type of player he is um and, and what type of you know mindset he brings to the game um he's obviously a student of the game first a fan of the game and you know he really knows how to play the game um and he wants to be out there competing. You know, we're playing against the defending champions preseason or not. You know, I know Mikel is the type of person that wants that action. Um, and that's those are the people that you can depend on throughout throughout a season. You know, there's going to be bumps and bruises throughout. But when you can depend on somebody and you know they're going to give it their all, no matter how they're feeling, you know, that gains trust throughout the locker room. Tonight out there, just after missing a couple games with, with the injury, just how did it feel to be back out there? Uh, well, it was great. Um, I had a had a great time getting back out there. Felt good trying to get my win, get ready for um, the 
first game on the 23rd. Uh, but just it, it felt great being back out there with the team uh, and just getting some minutes. And then just, you know, when you look at the full full team and the full four games overall, just like what do you feel like are the biggest things that you guys accomplished during the preseason? And then maybe kind of what is the next step as you guys get ready for um, the opener on Wednesday? Um, I just feel like uh, we just start playing together, uh, like playing together and getting a lot more guys back into the rotation and learning each other's tendencies. Uh, and also building up our conditioning. Uh, like we were in Utah to start it off. So that was already tough. Uh, but man, just playing with each other is the biggest thing. Uh, learning learning what everybody on our team does, learning their tendencies and just being out there playing. Like we, a, lot, a lot of players haven't really got to play. So it was cool just to get back out there, play some games and uh, just have fun, just not practicing and just playing games. So it was cool. Yeah, and just, I mean, as far as meshing the two groups, as far as those of you who were in Orlando or on the roster last year, and then the new guys that you brought in, like, what is the key to doing that as far as just making sure everybody is on the same page, on the court, off the court? How have you guys kind of gone about that during camp and the preseason? Uh, well, um, we, we, we've had a lot of, you know, like a lot of Zoom calls with each other. Um, just trying to get a feel for every everyone, individual, what people like, what people don't like. Um, just in practice, we've been getting a lot of reps in in practice. Um, main thing is really just trying to learn the plays and learn what we do defensively. And because um, like when we get stops, we run. So uh, we got to get those stops and, you know, just basically, man, picking each other up. And like I said before, learning each other's tendencies and doing what coach wants us to do out there on the court.